Welcome back and in today's video, we continue our discussion about the popliteal fossa. Earlier, we had discussed about the popliteal fossa part 1 and here we continue that discussion into part 2 of the popliteal fossa. Let me ask you, what did we learn in previous video? We learned that popliteal fossa is a diamond shaped depression in which side of the knee? behind the knee joint behind the knee posteriorly and then we saw its relationships the boundaries of popliteal fossa we saw that in lateral side we have which muscle in the thigh region the biceps femoris medial side we have semi tendinosis semi membranosis in lateral side in the leg region we have lateral head of gastronomus and in medial side we have the medial head of gastronomus and we saw the floor of the fascia fossa, which is made up of uh, which one? The tib femur, the knee joint, and the fascia covering the popliteus muscle. Then we discussed about the roof of the face, uh, popliteal fossa. And at the same time, we concluded by discussing about the contents of the popliteal fossa. What were the contents of popliteal fossa? We had about eight different contents. Can you just recollect that one is the popliteal artery right very good popliteal artery and its branches popliteal vein and its branches tibial nerve and its branches right then common peroneal nerve or common fibular nerve and its branches the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh region then the popliteal lymph nodes genicular branches of which nerve the obturator nerve and finally the fat that is seen in that area so this were the contents of popliteal fossa and we started on discussing with the first content of the popliteal fossa that was the tibial nerve we completed the discussion then we discussed about the common peroneal nerve also now here we focus on to the popliteal artery what is that the popliteal artery okay this is a bit more important with regard to your studies than the popliteal uh, sorry than the tibial nerve etc so what is a popliteal artery so which is the artery that is seen in the thigh region the major artery which is the the femoral artery so popliteal artery is in fact the continuation of femoral artery we studied the femoral artery when we were discussing about the uh, femoral canal the anterior thigh muscles of the thigh region then the adductor canal etc so the femoral arteries continuation is the popliteal artery from where is it continuing as the popliteal artery we studied about the opening in the adductor magnus known as the adductor hiatus do you remember that just recollect the previous uh, lessons that we learned so the popliteal artery is in fact the continuation of Popliteal artery is in fact the continuation of femoral artery at the adductor hiatus or from the opening of adductor magnus. Clear? So this is the continuation from opening of adductor magnus of adductor magnus. This is the first point that you should write, right? This is the deepest component of the popliteal fossa. This is the most deepest structure of among all the vessels, among tibial nerve, common peroneal nerve, etc. This popliteal artery is the deepest content of the popliteal fossa. So this is the deepest content of popliteal fossa. What is it? Deepest content of popliteal fossa. Clear? Now, we had a strategy to discuss the tibial nerve. How did we discuss? It starts from where we discussed. Then what is its orientation? What is its alignment? The similar one for the popliteal artery. It's run downwards. This is a common thing that any one of us knows. Because if the femoral nerve artery is here, definitely it will come downwards. It runs downwards bit laterally that's more important bit laterally slightly laterally what was the relationship of what was the direction of tibial nerve it runs vertically downwards so this one runs slightly laterally what about the common peroneal nerve it runs 
more laterally into the biceps femoris so this one runs almost vertically down almost downwards like this but a slightly a lateral orientation but a slight lateral orientation into the popliteus muscle popliteus muscle why i did tell about the popliteus earlier when we were discussing about common peroneal nerve we discussed the plantaris but here why popliteus any idea because this is the point because the popliteal artery is the deepest content and popliteus is also a deep muscle so it is related to that so this runs downwards and bit laterally right okay and now the next point is where does this artery ends it ends ends at the lower border of popliteus lower border of popliteus muscle as anterior and posterior branch so you have here your popliteus muscle and at this lower part this one ends and becomes uh, anterior and posterior branches okay so that is all about the popliteal arteries general introduction this runs vertical it runs downwards and it is starts from the opening of adductor magnus it is a continuation of femoral artery it's the most deepest content of the popliteal fossa and ends at the lower border of popliteus muscle now what are the relationships of this uh, artery what are the relationship of this artery for example for your understanding let me draw this artery over here just for your understanding like this so we have the popliteal artery over there now let me just tell me what are its relationship okay uh, the relations of popliteal artery you can just look at this diagram and say from above backwards okay anteriorly and posteriorly can you tell what are the relationship anteriorly what do you have just just imagine that uh, this board is the knee joint and we have the popliteal artery here what will be the structure anterior to the popliteal artery that is your knee that is your lower end of the femur so the relationships include the femur lower end okay then here you have which structure the knee joint the posterior part of knee joint the part of knee joint and here you have a fascia which covers the popliteus muscle which we have studied earlier that is a fascia covering fascia covering popliteus muscle so this is the relationship from uh, above backwards okay or from anterior posterior relationship okay that is the popliteal fossa the even the popliteal fossa is in posterior you know that so anterior to that you have the lower end of the femur then you have the knee joint and then you have the fascia covering the popliteus muscle is it clear don't get confused think always that popliteal fossa is posterior so you can just think what are the structures anterior to that the femur is there the knee joint is there and just below that the fascia covering the popliteus now what are the relationship uh, suprolaterally in the lateral side let us see what are the relationship here we have which muscle can you just tell me suprolaterally you have laterally you have which is this muscle over here that is the biceps femoris you know that right then you have so laterally you have uh, excuse me the laterally you have the biceps femoris over here right okay then you have the lateral femoral condyle is there right then the lateral head of gastrocnemius muscle so that's so simple the lateral relationships are all the structures that are seen laterally you just have to write it laterally you have the biceps femoris muscle over here right the lateral femoral condyle is here right and then here you have the medial head lateral head of the gastrocnemius then what are the relationship medially so simple like this you have the semi tendinosis and semi membranosis over here the first one the medial femoral condyle is here you got it right medial femoral condyle is here and finally you have the medial head of the gastrocnemius what is that the medial head of the gastrocnemius so that's so simple with the relationship of a popliteal artery what i told you earlier you have to just imagine with your mind just where is that structure located then you can simply write down it that is here what is the structure this is the semi tendinosis and semi membranosis this is the medial head of the popliteus muscle and this is the uh, medial sorry medial head uh, medial femoral condyle and medial head of the gastrocnemius and of course two more additional structures that is here you have the tibial nerve is here and popliteal vein is there tibial nerve and popliteal vein is also seen related to the popliteal artery am i confusing you 
I think no. It's so simple. You just have to study it one by one, one by one. So we finish the relationship, and finally the branches. The branches. You know that there are three branches. What are that? Muscular branch, right? Yes, muscular branch. Then cutaneous branch is the then articular branch. Try to remember these things. MCA, okay. So that uh, when you try uh, with an artery or when you try with a nerve, you just know that there is some muscular branch. And then imagine which are the muscles that is related to near to this one. So this one has some adductor magnus. You know that from the adductor magnus opening it starts, okay. Then here you have the semi tendinosis, semi membranosis, bicep femoris, that is your hamstring. Then here you have the medial and lateral head of the gastronomus, that is the gastronomus muscle. Then you have the plantaris and popliteus, the plantaris and popliteus. So see that this is the muscular branches. Just remember it has a muscular branch and correlate all the muscles that are related to that, right? Yes. And what about the cutaneous one? One small cutaneous branch is arising. One small cutaneous branch arises directly from the popliteal artery. Just no need to study the name of just uh, remember that one small cutaneous branch arises from that. Then what about the articular branches or the genicular branches? They are five in number. Oh God, five. Yes, five in number. And it's two superior, one in the middle and two inferior. That is two superior, one in middle and two inferior. Superior are known as medial and lateral superior genicular arteries. Medial and lateral superior genicular artery. This one is middle genicular artery and this one will be medial and lateral inferior genicular artery. Medial and lateral inferior genicular artery. Clear? All these arteries are forming the anastromosis around the knee joint which is an another topic which we might discuss in future okay so just remember the uh, branches of the popliteal artery the branches include the branches to the adductor magnus hamstring gastronomus plantaris and popliteus all the muscles which are seen in this region right then the cutaneous nerve you know, one cutaneous branches the articular branches or genicular two five in number just remember two plus one plus two okay two for the same name medial lateral superior two superior right so two superior means one medial lateral superior genicular, medial lateral inferior genicular, and middle genicular. Just remember and recollect that, and just by uh, and just memorize this one. Okay. Right now we finish with the popliteal artery, and final thing into the popliteal fossa that is the popliteal vein. What is that? The popliteal vein. Yes, the popliteal way, the popliteal way, it is so simple, you don't have to memorize anything, you just have to remember that it starts at the lower part of the, where the popliteal artery ends, where does the popliteal artery ends, the lower border of the popliteal, so it starts with the popliteus muscle, so simple it is popliteus muscle, right, and what were the two branches of the popliteal artery, if this was a popliteal artery, it divides into two branches, anterior and posterior branches, okay, so this one starts from the veins that are related to anterior and posterior branches of the tibial uh, popliteal artery or anterior and posterior tibial artery. Is it confusing? So you know that the veins will be uh, running upwards. So it would be we would start from that region. Okay, so this is the popliteus muscle from the popliteus its origins. That is from popliteus its origin like this. Okay, and you know that there are anterior and posterior branches of the popliteal artery, which are known as anterior tibial artery and posterior. So this one would be accompanying, uh, this one would be starting from the veins, these are accompanying the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. So you have here anterior and posterior tibial artery, along with that you might have the anterior and posterior veins would be there. From that veins continuation, this one starts. Okay, and it continues as the femoral vein. It continues as the femoral vein. That it is the femoral artery. Here it is a femoral vein. So you can just relate that and study where that ends. This one starts. Okay, and finally you have to relate the popliteal vein with respect to the popliteal artery. Okay, in the lower part, the popliteal vein will be related to me will be medial to the popliteal artery. Okay, in the lower part, the popliteal vein will be medial to the popliteal vein. Whereas in the middle part of the popliteal fossa, it will be posterior to the popliteal artery. It will be posterior to the popliteal artery. Whereas when it goes to the upper part of the popliteal fossa, it becomes lateral to the popliteal artery. To remember, draw it this way. Okay, all right. In the lower part of the popliteal fossa, this one will be medial to the popliteal artery. So this is the popliteal artery. 
let us imagine this is the popliteal artery. So this structure will be medial to the popliteal artery. From there, it will cross the popliteal artery and it will become posterior to the popliteal artery in the middle part. Okay. And then it becomes a posterolateral to the popliteal artery in the upper part. So you define popliteal vein with respect to the popliteal artery. In the lower part, it is medial to the popliteal artery. In the middle part, it is posterior and the upper part, it is a posterolateral. Just that much only about the popliteal artery. Now we move on to the clinicals in the popliteal fossa, which is very important. And first one is that when blood pressure is measured in the lower limb, the popliteal artery is used for measuring that blood pressure. You must also remember that the popliteal artery is deep to the popliteal fossa, so auscultation is a bit difficult, but still we use popliteal artery in measuring the blood pressure in the lower limb. Now, you know what is aneurysm, so the popliteal artery is more prone to aneurysm than any other arteries in the body. Than, one, than any other arteries in the body. So this is one of the most common artery which is prone to aneurysm. Then there is a condition known as foot drop which is very important clinically. That condition is due to the paralysis or damage to the common peroneal nerve or common fibular nerve. Okay, you know that there is a nerve known as common fibular nerve or common peroneal nerve. When there is a paralysis to that nerve, what can happen is that a condition known as foot drop will be there. For if this is the foot, foot drop is characterized by drop in the foot. That is, there is intact plantar flexion and inversion. But dorsiflexion of the foot will be absent that means your dorsiflexors and everters will be weak the so foot will appear to be in its plantar flexor position so in walking or the person cannot go for the dorsiflexion or push off face always his foot will be in the plantar flexed position so that is the clinical relevance this is due to the paralysis of common peroneal nerve which is the site of common paralysis is the fibular head. Do you remember when we discussed about the common peroneal nerve, we discussed that it winds around the fibular neck. So this is the most common site of injury to the common peroneal nerve, that is the fibular neck, right? And then there is the paralysis of tibial nerve, which is another condition. If there is a paralysis of tibial nerve itself, there is motor loss as well as sensory loss is more prominent in superficial as well as deep muscles of the calf region so entire calf muscles can get motor loss that means weakened as well as intrinsic muscles of the sore also can go for the weakness when it is the damage to the tibial nerve okay the damage to the common peroneal nerve can result in the damage weakness of dorsiflexors and everters but here it is the calf muscles superficial and deep calf muscles and intrinsic muscles of the sore what about the sensory loss in case of tibial nerve? Any guess would be in the sole of the foot, okay? Uh, palmar aspect of the digits, okay? Plantar aspect, not palmar, the plantar aspects of the digits and in between the nail beds on the dorsum of the foot. So the sensory loss would be in the plantar aspect of whole of the plantar aspect of the foot, okay? This entire region, you can have the sensory loss. At the same time, plantar aspects of the digits, Okay, plantar aspect of each of the digits and also on the dorsum of the foot uh, with respect to the digits, right? So that is the most relevant clinical conditions with respect to the popliteal fossa. And now we have an important mnemonics to remember the artery, vein, blood vessel and relationship in the popliteal fossa. Let us just have a quick look at okay. this diagram. This red color indicates the popliteal artery. This blue one popliteal vein and black one let it be the tibial nerve. Now if you look at the upper aspect, this is the popliteal fossa region. If you look at the upper aspect of this popliteal fossa, what is the relationship you see? You first see the artery, then you see the vein and then you see the nerve that is AVN from medial to lateral direction. Whereas the middle aspect what you see in the popliteal fossa, it is a nerve, art, nerve, vein and artery. In the lower part also you see the same relationship, no vein and artery. You are just, uh, when you are writing this diagram for the examination point of view, you can just remember this one. And only in the upper part there is a difference. That is, in the upper part it starts with artery, then with the vein, then with the nerve. Then the middle part it starts with the nerve, vein and artery. Lower part also nerve, vein and artery. Clear? 
So that's all about the population force. So this might be a very big, very vast discussion because this is a quite important topic. This is the most easiest manner for you to study this one is to understand the structure, just under memorize the location and just relate it. All things are related, in fact, for the popliteal artery, popliteal vein, tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve also. And just make few columns and then just study the thing. It is so simple once you grasp the essence of this knowledge. Okay, and to see you with the next video. Until then, stay tuned. And if you like the video, don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to our 